Hi and welcome to another video in the RHCSA video series. Today's video is on diagnose and address routine SE Linux policy violations. So this is literally the last video in the RHCSA series. Um, happy to report um, and it will be another uh, video on SE Linux. So this is more about the um, viewing the violations and what the best steps are to find steps to resolve those in the cleanest way possible um, and I will have some steps to actually create a example violation a very simple and crude one but at least it will create one fairly simply um, and allow you to um, then go and fix it so first things first let's uh, create the violation so First thing is launch the terminal and as always let's go sudo bash okay and what we want to do is make changes to the se linux uh, targeted se users so we want to do an echo and then user so this is the username and then user underscore u so this is setting the context for user one to the user um, context uh, these bits should just be pretty much default values so s0 to s0 and then c0 to c1023 and then uh, so that's append to the end of the file and it's just etc SD Linux targeted AC users. So you should be able to do a count on the file and make sure my change has been made. Okay, so what I have done as well, previous as well, so in the default, so this is for all users, I've also set that user context as well. Um, but here we've set it specifically for that user as well. So what this will do is uh, not much at the moment, but you'll see um, the, you, the root user is unconfined. So they're, they're not confined by AC Linux at the moment, but this user's now got that user confirm for confinement. So that means multiple different things, depend obviously depends on your policy, but if the policy is applying, then it'll, it may have different actions and block different things depend on that. So what we can do um, is now also set a Boolean um, to then stop users from being able to execute any files within their own directories. So we did that in the last video, so that's set se bool boolean and then minus p for persistent and then we do user underscore exec content content and we set that to off. It will take a few seconds because this is a, obviously a policy change and once you've made that we can then try and log in as this user one user and what will happen is we won't even be able to log in because lots of things will be executed as part of the login okay so you see that just gone straight back to the login screen now so that means it's worked so if we go back in as administrator we see an ABC denial which is exactly what we want and now we work to uh, resolve this. So the first thing to do is um, we can review obviously through the um, through the GUI just by clicking the link. But I want to show you how to do it um, through command line because this is where it's more uh, complex, of course. So se alert minus a. We can list all the alerts and we can specify the log. So var log and it'll be audit and then audit dot log. So that's where all the logs generally go in. If you do that, you're going to get a lot of logs um, and it will just pipe through and eventually you'll get to the, the very last one will be the latest log. So just wait for that to complete. If if that command didn't work, um, you may have not installed the uh, SE troubleshoot server. I think it's installed by default, but that's just um, that will be just DNF install SE troubleshoot hyphen server. Uh, obviously in my case it's going to come back as uh, already installed yep 
So I'll just go scroll back up and look at some of these logs. So, so audit message, uh, ABC denied for the GNOME session. Yeah, it makes sense. Um, so run user, uh, deconfig user. So it's just trying to do something in a temp, uh, temp file system. And that's been uh, denied because looks like uh, user context, as I mentioned earlier. Um, and so it's actually getting blocked, which is fine. Okay, so that doesn't, it gives us the, the denial message, but uh, not a lot more helpful information really. Um, uh, in case any, uh, it's in another log, you do also have the AU search and then minus M ABC comma user underscore ABC SE Linux underscore error. So search for uh, anything that matches ABC user ABC or SE Linux error. And you can see it removed returns very quickly and it's the same messages essentially um, but not, not so in depth it's just the ABC denies, which is quite good. Um, it's probably easier to read than the previous log. So I find that quite useful, but obviously you have to do that matching uh, option. So that was ABC user underscore ABC and then SE Linux underscore error. So there's an application, two applications called audit to Y and audit to allow. So audit to Y will give us the reason why it reckons that the particular action has been blocked by obviously the ABC message. It will review that and it's got some obviously scripting in there to pick up uh, particular ABCs and, and decide based on that to see what policy was getting it was getting blocked on and maybe the uh, what give you a bit more information on why it was uh, why it was blocked. So do audit two and then Y. Then minus A to do all of them. So we actually got the answer as well, which is quite good. Um, so we've got type ABC as the message denied for this PID. So that's a process ID. Uh, it's again trying to run this particular file in the, the temporary directory and was caused by one of the following booleans was set incorrectly. Um, so it's either domain can map and map files one or allow user to ex exec content. So that's the one we actually changed. From off, uh, on to off, so that's cool. So it's actually, she's giving us the uh, the answer we need. But let's do the other one as well. So audit to allow, and then minus a and minus w to give us a workaround. So it looks almost similar because audit to allow was just. At audit to Y was just too good. So obviously we can fix it using the exact command, pretty much the opposite of what we run earlier. So if we run that, click paste, give it two seconds, we then should be able to change user. And now I should be able to log in as this user one. and that's successfully logging in. So that's fixed it. Uh, that pretty much concludes the video and concludes the series. Um, so that concludes all the uh, exam objectives. So I, I aim now to do um, a video in the coming weeks to go through um, the practice exam that Red Hat has generated uh, and try and uh, work through all of the solutions there. Um, so I'll I'll try and I'll try and do that shortly. But yeah, I hope you've um, enjoyed the series. Um, if you haven't already, subscribe because there will be more uh, exciting stuff coming up. Um, I will then uh, start to think about what I'm going to do next. Um, I'm sure we'll, we'll probably go down the either security route or some more sort of system administration sort of um, certifications. But yeah, um, thanks. As always for watching if you haven't already subscribed like the video um, and hit the bell icon to get notifications of any new videos I, I upload um, yeah thanks for everyone that's subscribed so far and thanks for everyone for your comments and suggestions throughout it's been really useful 
um, yeah, just uh, appreciate all the support and all the uh, Kofi uh, people that bought me co coffees. It's been fantastic. Thank you guys, and uh, yeah, I'll see you at the next video. Thank you.